All right, welcome everybody. It's great to have you here. I'm very excited. We've got Jackie and Cindy and Sean and Gabby and Meredith and Terry, Roland, Sandra, Theodore, Theodora. That's a beautiful name. Um, <laughs> Tanya. All right, we've got some great, I'd love to see you guys that you're joining us tonight. We've got some great panelists. I'm very excited about it. And I'm here in Colorado, so I'm playing around with all my internet trying to get this, this safe. But we've got the wonderful Alana Saunders is with us. Do you like to be called Elena or Alanda? That was one of the- It's Elena. Mm -hmm. Elena. Elena, okay. Okay, and Elena has a wonderful company, um, Get Pulse, and she'll tell you more about herself. We also have Robin Manis with us today. Unfortunately, Jessica Maurer could not be here with us. Um, a family kind of emergency came up. Everything's okay, but it just, things happen in life as we all know. And Robin is SCW social media manager and she's wonderful and we love her and she decided to step in. So I'm very grateful for that. We have Abby Apple, who we all know is the Instagram goddess. I've renamed you and that's it. You used to be a princess, but you've been elevated during COVID. So that's wonderful. And we have Kia Williams here, who's done an amazing job of being a manager, of being a uh, starting her, being an entrepreneur, starting her own business. And she is very, very well-rounded and well-educated as it goes for social media. So I'm just pleased to welcome these ladies with us. We have Sean Senegin, who is SCW's creative director, who is fabulous, who is running our webinar for us tonight. I'm Sarah Cooperman. I always forget to introduce myself. It's kind of like weird. Um, and we have about 100 people that have registered. We're thinking, well, I'm already seeing 26 of you. So we're thinking we're typically, pay attention to this, we'll probably end up with maybe 35 folks. Now we have a little bit over 100 who've registered. So think about how many of you guys are watching recordings and we track our recordings. So this is interesting. So when you're posting things on social media, don't think, don't think people are watching you right then and there. They're probably going to pull things up later. So um, I'd like you to do what you guys know what to do. Move your mouse, please. Go to the bottom middle of your screen. You're going to see the share screen button. Please go over to the left. You're going to see your chat box. And if you would, open the chat box and you can type into the chat box your name and where you're from. And we love to get this because... I want to make sure you know how to use the chat box because this is your webinar. You guys are the ones that are showing up live and you're the ones that are going to reap the most benefits. So thank you for coming. So first of all, we started chatting about this, which I think was very fun. We started chat chatting about this um, before the camera came on. And the first thing we wanted to talk about was how can I optimize my time to foster the connections I've made on social media now that I'm spending more time in person in the gym. And I was really interested in what Kia had to say because of her focus, how it's changed over the pandemic and now that we seem to be getting um, out of it. So Kia, what are your thoughts on this? Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much. And this is your 100th episode of Tuesday Talks, yes? yes? And I believe, well, congratulations for that. I believe we did like the first one together on the subject or on the topic of social media. So here we are coming full circle and so much has changed over that year. So yes, you are correct. When the stay at home mandate first hit us, I was living in the state of Colorado. So maybe in decent, um, February-ish is when our governor said, you know, everything's locked down, you don't go anywhere. How do we continue to sustain? How am I going to feed my cute little dog? How am I gonna feed myself? So we shift our entire business focus to online so we could reach people some way. We're looking at geographical changes from state to state. Some states remain basically wide open throughout the entire pandemic, so nothing changed for them. But then other states, they are experiencing a bit of a slow transition because there are people who have experienced, I don't know, maybe something traumatic throughout this whole stay at home mandate. 
So maybe they're not quite ready to come back into our gym. So that means that we don't just uproot from what we've established online and through social media because we still want to be accessible to those people. But in some of our states, people are ready to get at home. I have Zoom fatigue. I'm sick of looking at my husband's face. Can I please get out of this space? Yes. So of course, we're opening our doors. We're trying to be sustainable. We want to be economical, of course, but yet still we want to make sure that we have those new business practices that we've learned. People want to see us cleaning our equipment. They don't want to be barked at about, you know, do you have your mask? Do you not? So making sure that we understand who it is that we're serving, what their needs are, what their desires are, but also what their ticks are. We don't want to tick people off with all of our changes. Yeah, that's very valuable. And I think it's also interesting. We're at a different time. I love the way you talk about the different states. I was shocked this morning that I read that Los Angeles actually has gone a little bit backwards. And now whether you're vaccinated or unvaccinated, both everybody has to wear a mask indoors now because of the variant, the Delta variant that's come mm-hmm. out. Um, so it's, it's a big concern. And people in LA may be on social media more often because they have to be masks. So I think that that's very valuable and, and looking at things geographically. Um, Abby, what are you finding that things are changing and how they've changed from the beginning of the pandemic and what can we take away now that this ridiculous situation that we're, that we were in for 18 months seems to be lifting? Well, I mean, we were lucky because Florida, I say this, we were open the whole time. I mean, we were able to work, you know, I was able to work still a little bit of live. We were closed for two months and then we opened back up just slowly, but so many people were, you know, hesitant to come back to the facility. I mean, even the classes I had were extremely small, but then also we were were limiting the sizes. So almost immediately, we know this, that almost all the, almost all the clubs just transitioned from both live, even in Florida to doing live virtual. And so the instructors, they had to do it right away. Um, So now there's not, I don't, I I don't see it quite as much as many people doing live virtual um, in, the club setting, but they still want the option. And it's a huge bonus if when people join, join a facility or they were still, they're staying, they're, they're maintaining their membership. They have the option to do either or, and they are utilizing it. And then when they see that, you know, kind of in the package that makes them want to join more. Um, I think for us right now with social media, we're, we are able, I think, um, with, and I've been saying this all along, I've been saying this even before, before COVID hit, we should be using our social media. I mean, really to promote, we were talking about this earlier, promote our brand, promote our classes, promote our facilities, um, both live and the live virtual. And um, with that said, um, we should be not only, you know, I, you know, I'm always here, you know, posting, you know, workouts and videos, but as instructors telling our members where we are, I said this, you know, what our programs are, where we are, if we're at a new facility, so we can, we can take them with us, but if they like us, they like us for a reason. So being able to promote ourselves, you know, on social media to get them to know what we're doing in the area. But also I said earlier that my, my population, they're instructors, instructors around the country. So I'm able to at least stay in, in contact with them, even if we weren't able to do our, um, our live manias. And what is, what have you found to be most effective to grow your, as you're, you're seem to be kind of an expert on Instagram. What things have been more effective for you? Well, it's, it's definitely been um, a learning curve. I mean, the whole year for all of us, it has, you know, in the beginning I was posting like full workouts on Instagram. And first of all, I realized that people don't have the attention span. We know this with social media. They just don't have more than like, most of them don't have like a more than a 60 second attention, you know, except if we're talking about the dodo. Now, if we're looking at the dodo, which are all the animal, the cute little animal videos, I can watch dodo for like three minutes, but we don't have like a really long attention span. So I realized, um, first of all, I didn't want to give everything away. And I think this is important for fitness professionals to understand. We don't want to give everything away, but we do want to give people samples, not only of our classes, but also, you know, what we're talented at and why they want to continue following us, you know, and, and why they want to, and why they want to be kind of our biggest fan and why they want to be part of our culture. 
So um, posting little clips, little videos, um, it, not even a shortened workout, just maybe a movement or two or what your specialty is. My specialty is being able to take a really challenging movement and break it down so that everyone can do it. So what I did is I focused on that. I can take that really challenging burpee and I can break that down so that even my 80 year olds, sorry, my 80 year olds out there can do the burpee, but they can do it at their own level. So really for the 60 year olds, they can all do right. it. All right, you can do the burpee. You can, you can do my burpee. Okay. <laughs> anyway, but making, understanding what your brand is, understanding your population, who you're trying to reach and how you bring them along. And of course, we're always talking about, we're talking about how we can, um, we can monetize that. And as I said before, my group, it's, we're, they're, they're instructors and they're all dealing with the same, I say this, the same people that I'm working with. So how do we continue working with them, both live and live virtual? And how would you answer that, Elena? Like, how do we continue working with them both online and live, live streaming, as well as getting them to come in and, and seeing them face to face? First, you have to know your niche. As Abby was speaking on the things that she knows how to do, she can break down a burpee. You have to know your niche and what you're good at. So once someone sees that you are excited about what you're presenting, that you grasp them. They have, they've already come in. How are you able to do that is that you have to make sure that you are valuing the time from being on the screen and being off the screen. It's kind of like you have two children and you have to make sure you give them the exact amount of time and not to make sure one is more favorable than the other. Those who during the pandemic were on your social medias that were loving it and want to stay there, you have to make sure you know what they like. And those students are those fit pros that want to come see you live or in at an, an venue or an event. You have to know what they like. So you have to split your time. Social media is time consuming. I'm here to tell you that. I teach it. It's time consuming. You have to know when to post, where to post, how to post, office, offer various products and services to get them off of social media. So where they want to come to your live classes and office ver offer various merchandises so that they will actually pay for your services and continue to progress with your brand. So it's really important to manage your time and also stay present on social media as well as in a live setting. And that's very important. Now, I think a lot, uh, Elena, you do your own social media. Abby, I think you do your own as well. And Kia, you do your own. I'm, I'm that correct. Is correct. Yes. Do you think are there valuable tools you can use if you're doing your own, or do you think somebody should use a third party provider? No, I do. I I Go know. ahead, Elena. Take yeah, it away. I, I do suggest third party providers for those who don't have the time or are not acclimated with social media just to get it started. But it's really important that they get to know you because they start to see a program and get very bored and will not come back. Social media is engaging. That's how you build your reach, your engagements, your likes. It's because that you are present in the moment. And if you're not present in the moment when somebody's responding and you're not replying to their response, they're not gonna come back. And you go, your reach is actually gonna decrease. So it's really important that when you are posting and you do use third parties that you actually go back and look at the comments and seeing what your followers are stating and be a part of the conversation. Correct. And put the personality back into social media. Sometimes we're experiencing a lot of people's social media become very robotic and stale because it's not an actual person who's engaging and um, who has the credibility and the understanding of the industry and the personnel or the consumers who they are engaging with. So it's very important that we exercise, exercise our engagement and put the personality and social back in social media. So as Elena mentioned, if someone writes to you, respond to them, not just with an emoji, that's not personal. And then how could that make a person feel? But also Sarah, to, to the point of your question, we do have you know content providers out there. We can schedule and catalog our posts. Cool. If that's what you need to do to stay on schedule, but it's very important that you recognize and remember that things change by the day. And because people are personally invested in your brand and in your image, 
you got to be careful and remember, or at least be prepared of what's coming next. You don't want to, if there's a big tragedy that affects nearly 90% of your consumers and followers, and you don't address that, that's problematic. Or if you go on with life like, oh, what happened to you does not matter to me. I still have a new sale coming out. That's tone deaf. And that's going to make people lose their trust in you. And they'll probably unfollow and go to someone else's page for their services. So yeah, yes and no. Just stay involved, stay engaged, and know what's being put out there on your behalf. And um, Robin, <laughs> welcome back. Thank you. Um, I think my internet is zoomed out as well. <laughs> it's like someone said, oh, I think, Elena, you said you're plugged right into your internet. Well, when I'm at home and will match, it does, I could be plugged into the, you know, in, into the, into the telephone pole right. and I'm not getting Wi-Fi because the minute it rains and will match, everybody shuts down. Okay. Anyway, Robin, what we're talking about is trying to harness social media to pull people in, not just to be clients, but also to be followers. And I think Kia and um, Elena were both um, in agreement that you need to stay connected and be authentic and be present, be there. So what are your thoughts about, do you do this yourself? Do you hire an outside service? Do you, you know, computerize it? Um, how do you find to be the most effective way to engage with social media? I mean, definitely organic posts um, are going to work the best. They're going to reach the most amount of people. Um, and it's, it's built into the algorithms, which, you know, we hate those funny words because we don't really understand what they mean and they change all the time. And, you know, you're always trying to keep up with them. But um, organic posts that are real and have real valuable content are the ones that people are going to see the most. And then it's going to draw that engagement. And of course, you being real and commenting back and, you know, understanding, thanking people for their, for their input and everything is, is what you want. It's going to have people coming back saying, oh, it's a real person talking to me, even though I can't see them. And it kind of gives them that social aspect of social media, even though, you know, you're behind a screen. But you just want to make sure that you're definitely keeping up with engaging, um, using the scheduling options I only like to use them when it's necessary. If I know I'm going to be out, you know, I have something coming up, but you want to make sure, like Elena said, that you are recognizing what's being posted, what's on the schedule, and making sure that you are checking and you are engaging with any comments. Um, most of your third party, they're just going to schedule out for like the whole month. And you need to make sure that you know where to go behind the scenes in these platforms to find out what it is. So you can see if what you're talking about, like Kia said, if what you're gonna be posting soon is going to still be engaging. What if it's obsolete by now? You know, cause you don't want, if it's posted a month out and then all of a sudden we're still talking about this, it's like, we're, we're on to the next subject. We're past that now. So you need to kind of be aware of what is going on. So not just putting it all in their hands, you still need to be kind of active in your own business. And you know what I find interesting? I just read Rocky says he tries to answer ASAP. And he says it does make a difference. I think you get more comments, you get more conversation going on. That's very interesting. Um, what if, and this was a question, what is going to happen? Will my following continue to grow if I'm not spending as much time on social media? Like, you know, it's it, for me as a person, it's very hard for me to constantly be checking and on and on and setting up little buzzers and vibrations. It's hard for me to do that. And possibly I may be a little shy that I don't wanna share what I ate for lunch and what the dog just did. Nobody you know, it's, know, although I do all the time. <laughs> I'm so proud of my cooking. If anyone wants to be my friend on Sarah Cooperman Fitness, I am cooking. I know, Abby, shut up. There, but, um, but what do we do if we don't want to, like Kia, what do we do if we, uh, my husband will never post. So how do we, do you have some advice on how we can balance this? How you can balance that. Um, I think also probably the people who follow you, Sarah, have a lot more in common with you than you think. So if you are reaching that plateau or hitting a wall of I need a break, how about you put a Canva post out there saying under construction or taking a break? 
I encourage all of you to take a wellness hiatus as well. And I'll see you on X day so that they know that you're coming back and that you're still invested with them. But social media is a very tricky thing. Once you start posting less then the algorithms change and then you get buried under this and that. And it's hard to, to come back up into it. And Elena, now I'm gonna let you take it away because I know you got uh, input on that <laughs> part too. So it is important to remain consistent, not constant, but consistent with your engagement so people don't lose that interest and they don't feel like you forgot about them or neglected or deserted them as well. Oh, I love that. I love that idea. I think that's brilliant. Um, Abby, how do you, I think this is, the, the Instagram posts especially are very much part of your job. Like you take this very seriously. It is. Yeah. I mean, I take it seriously because that's, that's really, um, not the actual post, but that's where I get, I mean, I hate, I hate calling my instructors customers, but that's where I get, you know, people that I work with and people, and even in, in more people. And it's taken, you know, from the beginning of, and, it, and I think, um, Robin, what you said earlier about it has to be organic. And the one thing here, one of my best friends is one of the marketing managers, marketing, he's the social media marketing manager for one of the largest companies in the world. <laughs> so I probably should, I should be way better if he, that, that was the case, but I, I've learned so much from him. And one of the things about organic and just being yourself um, is so huge. Being yourself on social media, um, again, owning your brand, that, and not being afraid to do that. Cause I think a lot of people are afraid to show who they are on social media. I mean, it, and not everything, but a lot of who they are. So what you see on my Instagram page, is really me. And I think the people that have been following me for, you know, or people I've been friends with who've been following me for years, they know that it's the new people. And as I said, organic, trying to reach more people over the past year. I mean, I didn't hire a company to do it for me. Thankfully, I'm glad I didn't. But over the past year for me, doing it on my own um, and being, you know, really diligent about, about posting, I probably got maybe 5,000 over the past year. I mean, that's, that's pretty good without paying anybody to do it. Yeah. So that, that's pretty good. I'm like, all right. And I mean, look from, I look where I was and where, where I am now. Um, but the whole thing about organic and being yourself, I mean, that to me is huge, but I have to be on it honestly for myself, because I do, I have to be on it every day, almost every day. I probably take a day off if I'm doing like a workshop or right, I shouldn't even say that. Cause I did a Schwinn workshop on Sunday and I said, I'm not going to post. I'm going to get up, I'm going to eat breakfast and then I'm going to go. But of course I got up like an hour early and posted something, but I try to take off like one day of the week because you just need a day away from it. But I still reply to people. Like I'm always replying, you know, to somebody, if they write something longer than like a thanks, I will reply to them. If they, you know, if they give me like, if they give me an emoji, I give them, he, I give them emoji back. You do, <laughs> right on. And you they give me an emoji, I respond them with emoji. But yeah, you have to be on, yeah, I'm on a lot. And going back to what you said, about making sure that the information that you're posting is pertinent. Well, every day I'm doing a different class. So it wouldn't make sense for me on Monday or on Sunday to post what I'm doing, you know, post something to promote what I'm doing on Friday. I'm gonna have to wait. I mean, unfortunately I've got to do what's right in front of me. So I post, you know, something about what's happening on Monday or what's happening on Tuesday. So you have to be aware of that, I think as well. And what's gonna help promote what and you're doing right there. And um, Elena, what do you think about, you know, hiring a company versus you've heard people talk about being authentic? How do we manage our time? You know, what are your recommendations? There's nothing wrong with hiring a company. I actually have clients up under me right now that I manage major companies that you probably don't know it's me. Um, you have to make sure that you're engaged with that company, that, know, that they know you and how to post, that they actually study you because companies are in the business to make money. That's just, that's just how it is, it's plain and simple. But you have to make sure that they're posting your brand because you are the brand. Not just your logo, you the person are the brand. So how you speak, how you move, how you vibe, all of that, that company has to know that about you. So when they're posting, they become you. And that's really important. Not just pay, paying a social media strategist or a company to do it for you and just say, oh, I'm done. You have to check on that company and make sure that they're representing your brand. So there's nothing wrong with hiring a company that's professional, that can build your reach, 
build your followers and do everything you need, but make sure that they are representing your brand to the fullest. And that's great. And then, and capturing your voice. Yes. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. That's great advice. What platforms do you guys think we should be growing? Kia, what platforms do you think hold the most interest for the fitness professionals and, and not just fitness professionals like Abby's reaching instructors, but also for how am I going to find clients? How do I reach right. them? It goes directly into your target demographic and your audience. Where are they? Where are they showing up? The older-ish millennial crowd, 30s to 45s, are still mostly um, invested in social media. You're seeing, or Facebook, rather. Um, and then a blend on Instagram. So your younger clientele, 25 to 35, if I'm getting these right, are on Instagram. If you're a younger target, is maybe teens-ish, early 20s. Yeah. Oh my word, you better learn TikTok. Mm -hmm. You better learn Snapchat <laughs> and all of that good stuff. And don't be the corny auntie me who's on there trying to learn all the new dances. My nephews will never allow me on their TikTok, just so you know. But you just got to know where your target demographic is and how they're engaging. And that's where you'll meet them. And follow them. Yeah, that's fantastic. And they'll reach out to you. You reach out to them. And there's that engagement that's, that's building up. Um, Robin, how, I know that we do, we found some great success with Instagram mm -hmm. and I think it was you that actually noticed that originally Instagram only allowed it, allowed 30 second videos and then the real, now it's yeah. expanded to the one minute video. What if, you know, and I never asked you this before, do you think we're getting better engagement from the one minute videos, from the 30 second videos or from the 15 second videos? Well, most people only stay on, the most you're gonna see when you look at your insights is a three second view. So you want most of your information right there up front. Like, what are you, what are you trying to get out? What do you want your, your clientele to know or your potential customer? What, what are you trying to tell them right there up in front? If they're engaged in that first three seconds, they'll watch a little bit more. Now, the minute, when it comes to the reels, I've noticed it's definitely the vertical videos. They want it to fill up the whole screen, look all pretty. So it's it's not just the algorithm of the time, it's the algorithm, algorithm of the type of video in the way you're filming. And when it comes to social media, the newest, hottest thing like reels is new to Instagram. They came out with that. And if you were posting a reel, it was, they were shooting it out. They were putting it in front of everybody. And before that, it was the IGTV. It was getting out in front of everybody. And now you've got Facebook where they have a little new thing going on that's kind of similar to the reel. So that's kind of, you know, they're pushing out the stories and stuff like that. So it's just whatever is the newest is going to be, you want to make sure you're studying and get on that type of, you know, make, in that, within that platform, you want to be posting that type of post to reach the most people, but it changes all the time. So we want to, we, you, for people who are watching this that are kind of like me and trying to learn, you know, <laughs> suck in as much as we can, we can Google Instagram reel mm -hmm. and they can actually show us on YouTube how to load it and blah, 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 and take it and doing that. And you're saying, Vertical, vertical, vertical on my on my phone, not the old horizontal right. way that I used to beg people to do because most of our people are looking at their emails, um, looking at their text messages and everything. They don't want to have to turn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Am I, right yeah. I mean, yeah, it just depends because YouTube is going to be the horizontal. It's just right. it's based on the platform and Instagram is more it's a phone based. It's not online as much as Facebook is. It's not on your computer screen as much. It's more of an on the phone, on the go based platform. So those vertical videos are what hits the most. But what's great too, Robin, that's about to come out. Instagram is now about to allow you to post on the website. They're coming See, out. Soon. That'll <laughs> help a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to share, talk, tell us about how we can do this and when do you think it's going to come out? Um, it's coming out um, next month, matter of fact. Um, you're going to be able to post on your website to go to Instagram.com because what they discovered, if anybody, everybody doesn't know, Instagram, Facebook owns Instagram. A lot of people may not know that. But what they discovered during the pandemic is that a lot of individuals were looking at their Instagram on the website. 
So they said, now we're going to have to provide that platform, just like Facebook, to where they can post through the website now because they had so many people looking at Instagram on their laptops because of the pandemic. So that's gonna change the whole dynamics of everything and also maybe change how you post your videos. They may allow certain different things and certain uh, elements may come out. It's gonna be a little bit different. But I also wanna expound upon the platforms that Sarah, as you mentioned, I think a lot of people make a mistake and try to get on every platform at one time. And that's the issue. You have to find that platform that is most effective for you. Some people may be a Facebooker. Some people may be an Instagram or a TikToker. If you know you're not a TikTok person, do not get on there. Because <laughs> if you don't post every day, you're just going to sit there and it's not going to happen. If you know Instagram is your platform, stick to Instagram, build that platform and gradually go on to the other platforms. I do suggest that everybody does have a Facebook because everyone is on Facebook. Not, not everyone, but my daughter does not want to get on Facebook because I'm on it. But everybody, majority of people have Facebook. The first thing a lot of businesses do, they go to your Facebook page. If you're trying to do something beyond um, just reaching your students in your class, I'm, I'm saying students, but the students in your classroom or just the fitness pros and maybe partnering with a company, the first thing they do is go to your Facebook page. They're not going to Instagram. So if you're looking to do things beyond that, you need to definitely have a Facebook page. And I really something that go that when you Google, Facebook will come up That's when you Google thing. on the computer. Instagram yeah. usually doesn't as much, but Facebook will. You are correct. That's so funny. I was just about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing that I find when I'm looking for people and I end up on their website, and they always have a link to, to their Instagram. So I'm clicking on Instagram and then it comes up on the screen. And that's why what it makes me think that, well, you know, this is gonna be, this is gonna be interesting. I'm gonna answer your question. We got an interesting question uh, Roland asked, but um, one more thing is that Instagram, do, do we think that people are gonna be on computers as much mm when this pandemic lifts and I'm out of my house and I'm going to my office where I'm not supposed to be looking at Instagram or Facebook in the middle of a work day. So I wonder about that. I'm just going to throw that out there. But Roland asked something interesting. Maybe this will be addressed later. Um, uh, let me bring this down just a little bit. Somebody else, da, 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 a little later. But how do you engage your clients who are seniors? I teach several senior classes and they're not on social media too much. Um, and again, it's Facebook should be a staple presence in your business. But I know that we have spoken at other social media webinars and this is actually, I feel like I'm opening my mouth and Jessica Maurer is coming out. Robin, you'll appreciate that. But um, Kelly Roberts has also shared this, Abby, when we were on a webinar with her, where you sometimes have to make a phone call and explain to people and say, can you get your nephew? Can you get your grandson? Can you get, you know, your caregiver to get on the phone with me right now? And I'm going to help you get on, you know, FaceTime, or I'm going to help you get on Zoom and talk you through it. Do you guys have any other advice that you might help Roland with. Abby? Yeah, and I did the same thing. So when I was, I first started teaching, I mean, it's very similar to the way that we were teaching new people how to get on Zoom in the beginning of COVID. So I, I, I would even say, okay, people that I didn't even know, people that I didn't even know who were taking my classes, I'd be like, okay, um, let's get on Zoom like 20 minutes early. Here's my phone number in case you can't get on. And so then we would talk it through on, I mean, I found myself doing that a lot. And I know another one, another perfect example of this is Robert Sherman. I mean, the people that are in my classes, I'm not sure if they're even on Facebook. Let's just go that, let's go that far. And we we are walking them through how to make sure that, you know, they can, they're, you know, audio, vi video, everything is working for them. So um, I think going back to what you said about Kelly, you, you have to get on the phone sometimes with them and walk them through it. And that's okay. So it normally it takes a couple of times and then they can figure it out. Okay. And here's the funny thing is that it's not Roland. It's really Tiffany. Roland <laughs> and her husband. Tiffany, you stay on this call and we're going to teach you how to change the name. <laughs> right. 
because you 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 deserve your own Zoom account, girl. All right. Anyway, um, and we had a few questions. What about LinkedIn? Are any of you guys doing uh, Elena? Are you doing LinkedIn? How do we grow on LinkedIn? Because I got to be honest with you, I'm on LinkedIn, and it's just oh my gosh, buy this insurance, buy it, let me do your marketing, I don't know. oh, just leave me alone. How do we engage on LinkedIn and get the following that we want? LinkedIn has actually changed now, especially during the pandemic. There's stories on LinkedIn, you can post stories. They're doing everything that Facebook does now. But I think the issue is a lot of people know that LinkedIn is for business or for my resume. So to try to get to that point to where we're posting fun things on LinkedIn, it's kind of hard but they have progressed and moved forward. Now, if you're trying to do a real business deal, LinkedIn is your platform. If you're trying to connect to that major CEO or anybody in a business that you're trying to connect to, LinkedIn is your platform for business or growing your business or connecting with other those who are in your industry. It's really important to have a LinkedIn account, but they are progressing towards like your Facebook and your Instagram because they're trying to stay updated with the times. Very interesting. That's great. My husband loves LinkedIn, loves, and he sends me articles. He sends me, I mean, just, you know, stuff from that I wouldn't look at. I normally would never see this stuff. So it's new things that are going on in our industry um, from experts and he sends it to me. And that's, that's, that's how I stay kind of updated on what's going on. And current, current. <laughs> that's great. That's really interesting. And how, now, I got asked, I don't know if you know anything about this, Kia, anything about Clubhouse or po or podcasting? Right on. So social media is interesting. I mean, it's brilliant people behind the scenes studying our behavior patterns, studying what we're putting out, what we're consuming and everything else. And then you have all these companies that want to keep up and um, interrupt the industries with their own businesses and stuff. So, I mean, there's always going to be something new, like Clubhouse came out. There's always going to be an update to Facebook, Instagram, and everything else because they're all competing with each other. Nearly all of them are owned by the same business, and LinkedIn is just social media in a suit and tie, things like that. So, I mean, if, if you're able to build a following on whatever is new, cool, but do your research and, and really watch what you see on TV, what you hear on the radio, because those are the things that are going to meet the most consumer needs and that's going to be uh, perceived as the coolest thing and if you're the type of business person or have the type of business where you don't want to get left behind where you want to remain relevant or current as as Abby said then maybe you are to study and get involved in the newer things coming out because with those apps there was musically that became I think TikTok and then TikTok will go away and something else will come in and there was vines and then all this in and out kind of stuff. So you just got to, you know, stay well read on it. Podcasting, that's my jam. I started my podcast. I don't know if it was like the angels, the ancestors, whoever watching out for me, but I started my podcast right before the pandemic hit, before we knew about it in America. And it was perfect timing. It was true divine intervention of being able to reach people on a different medium through social technologies, speak education. It was continuing education. We were able to build community by bringing in other fitness experts and professionals to speak specific to what they are com most competent in and helping them to generate more clientele as well. But with that being the newer podcast has been around for forever. But since that was perceived as the newer thing, lots of other people got onto it too. So it became oversaturated and very competitive. So we had to, on my platform, Fit and Fierce on the Mic, had to find a way of reinventing or still, stand, still staying true to our brand and our brand presence and imaging, but reinventing ourselves to continue, continuously stay competitive in the field or in the market, but also keeping the attention of our clientele. And I think that you're, you've done a great job with that. I think I was on one of your first, your very, very first podcasts, which was really kind of cool. And um, Kia does an exceptional job of this, but I also think I'm just going to mm, lend my kind of old opinion here. Think about the Rolling Stones. They just didn't break up. They just stuck to it. 
They just continue. It's like that 10,000 hours with, with Malcolm Gladwell. It's just stick to it. And sometimes you're going to find like, you know, Q, you're going to have to rebrand at different times, but you stick to it. So if you decide that you want to do some type, if you want to do a podcast, you start it. But if you just live in the podcast lane and you don't just, you know, put it out on social media, put it up on your website, send a few text messages, make a few phone calls. You're going to have to reach out of that modality to pull it in to get them drawn into that modality. It, 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 Kia, you're nodding because how did you grow your fans? I agree. Um, with the kind of community that we established, a lot of our growth came from organic word of mouth of people saying like, I just heard this fabulous podcast. I want you to listen. Yes, they said fabulous, not just me, but also because our featured guests were able to bring in their community as well. It was just that passing of, or paying it forward here, there, everywhere. Then the podcast platform that I am on, Anchor, um, allowed us to have um, uh, um, commercials and things like that. So that helped us to get a little bit more exposure. But to your point, Sarah, utilizing social media. So I could just directly share from the app to all of my social media, to my website. I could put in links to people's pages. I am studying um, what people are writing. So even if I take a hiatus from my own business, um, social media page, I'm still engaging as a consumer as well. So if I see a question out there about what's the best social media to use for this, that, and that, I'm like, hey girl, I see your question. Here's a link to my podcast. We covered that. So I'm not going to give the horse or lead the horse to drink. I, well, I guess I did lead them to drink. I gave them the app, but they're going to drink my Kool-Aid and then go on <laughs> and share it elsewhere. And because I put that publicly on their social media page, everyone who's watching their page saw it too. So it's just that trickle down effect. And it's the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. And, and it's funny. Um, I know that uh, Robin, I know that you're doing a lot of, you know, sharing and liking and, and it does, it just, you know, your, your friends out there, they do become your fans. And Robin, what are different ways that you're able to do that? Um, just, you just got to share what you love. I mean, if, it's kind of goes back to just being real with people and people are going to follow you and they're going to, you know, if they see that I my if my friends see that I'm involved with fitness, then they're going to take in that, that into consideration. And they're going to, you know, I could maybe inspire my own friends. And next thing you know, they're sharing my post, and then their friends see it. It's just, it's a total trickle down effect. And it's just getting it out there. And if you can at least engage, I mean, start small, you engage, your friends on your social media, you know, page, your personal page, and then it can just expand exponentially that way. Cause you're, you know, there's people everywhere who are just waiting for that little thing to pop in their head. And they're just like, Oh, that's where I need to be. That this is where I need to be. These are my people. I'm going to share this be with my people. So there's more people. And the next thing you know, it's just a big gathering and everyone is just kind of together and you have you've created this following organically because people are there for you all right this is wonderful i feel like we could just do this another hour i'm going to share a video with you guys right now here we go
very cool. We are going to be having Midwest Mania that's going to start in October live. We're very excited about that. But in the meantime, just so you know, July 24th and 25th, we have our Active Aging Summit, which is really great. We're very excited about this as well. actually a two-day event for active aging in July. And then we have August, we have a functional trainer apex, which is a little bit smaller, but you can also come as a one day. Fantastic. So I do want to thank you all for joining us. This has been a great webinar. Sean, thank you for running this for us. We sincerely appreciate it. Elena and Abby and Kia, thank you so much. I think we lost Robin again. Her Wi-Fi went, <laughs> but we love you, Robin. Thank you for all you do for SCW. And thank you for joining us. I'll see you guys on Thursday with another webinar. See you then. Have a good night.